pants, my my ass. I'm on my floor. Bonjour, Monsieur Pussycat. Cracking toast, wit. Start uh, spreading the uh, news. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the short podcast about short films. I'm your host, and we are discussing the Academy Award for Best Animated Short. Today's episode is about the 27th year of the award at the 31st Academy Awards, which celebrates the films of 1958. Today's guest is a very good friend of mine. Please welcome Madeline Moss. Hello, Madeline. Yay! Hello! 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 I'm happy to be here. <laughs> I am very happy to have you. You've, you've been a longtime friend of mine on yeah. the, this hell side of Twitter. Or so, oh, so yeah. it's, it's an honor to bring you into some Yay. of my like, creative stuff. Um, yes um, and uh and this is a very special episode i, I specifically picked it out for you and we'll get into <laughs> yes. why but before that yeah. uh, tell us what is your familiarity with this best animated short category um i okay so um we're gonna we're probably gonna go more into it but i only had seen at least once two out of the three i had never seen um obvious I think the most obvious one and the most obscure one is I'd never seen Sydney's family tree, but I am very fam- I'm very familiar with Looney Tunes, though I got into the process of knowing actually I'd never known which ones were were nominated for Academy Awards. Um, so I found that out recently. And um and you know, I'm 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 usually into Disney shorts, which is why, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm really into Looney Tunes. <laughs> I I mean I I think uh, the it's hard for me to compare Disney shorts and uh, Warner Brothers shorts from this time because they were so different. Like they had very different mm-hmm. approaches. But I like them both in different ways. I'm not that familiar with Terry Tunes though, so I'm looking <laughs> to hear that from you. I I was referring to like the category as like a whole, like over the years and stuff. Oh, um, <laughs> it's, I, I understand the confusion. But... Yeah. Oh, sorry. The category, as far as I usually, I haven't really been keeping up with the category unless it's like I, usually, and this is kind of bad, but um, I've I um, I mean I. Um, you, you can say you, you don't sh- care about the shorts. It's like that. I that's mean, the I, entire reason why I'm making this podcast. I, to, to I mean, I, it's not like I didn't care, but it's always <laughs> felt like, you know, like se- shorts to me always felt second to features, which is so bad. Like it shouldn't be that way. But I always am like, I always want to watch the features before I watch any shorts because I feel like shorts are quick and I could just be like, yeah, put those on in like a day or whatever. <laughs> because, you know, they're usually less than an hour i'd say mm-hmm. normally anyway yeah it it's like although on the flip side is also true like if you're trying to get through like all all the oscar nominees or whatever year it's just like you can get like like 10 15 nominees out real quick by just going through all the different shorts in a year it's right like, right and, and i've like, always sh- wanted to like do like you know because like century and amc will have like a shorts marathon and that's Mm -hmm. you know three hours and you kill them all but like i've never done that which i should i feel like i should oh yeah it it can get pretty fun and at those short screenings like well recently especially when it comes to live action and documentary they're very depressing but animated short tends to be pretty fun yeah i mean and i like you know don hertzfeld stuff and uh you know, Disney got back into um, having their shorts be nominated because they play before, you know, like uh, their features and Pixar movies and stuff. So mm-hmm. I like some of those. So I've seen, I've seen like, you know, I, I mean, I am definitely more fond of this era of animated shorts uh, as we're going to discuss. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. You're a big fan of the Disney, the classic Disney and Looney Tunes. I, I, yes. You're probably into tom and jerry a little bit as well yes i i am into tom and jerry and then uh other tex tex avery's been nominated a couple times in this category and i like his yes. stuff uh yeah. he's he's had different stuff with mgm and warner brothers yeah he so. it, it's kind of funny how tex avery like he like most directors tend to stick around with one studio like chuck jones is at uh warner brothers and then right and you have the disney's 
uh, yeah. old men and whatever. But Le Tex Le Avery likes to jump Le around. Whatever his name is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Tex Avery apparently was just like so sick of shit at Warner Brothers that he was just mm -hmm. like, fine, I'm going to MGM. And yeah. And, and, and then MGM went. fired him in like the early 50s and he went over to <laughs> Walter Lance Productions. Of all places. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, Walter Lance Productions ended up being like one of the last breaths of like the theatrical animated short or it's just like we, we'll get into it later but like they right. were one of the few to make it into the 70s before getting eventually wow. shut down oh my um, gosh <laughs> oh but, that makes me yes sad. uh so let's get into these nominees finally let's talk sure. about the shorts we're here to talk about yes. uh this year has only three nominees uh, our mm -hmm. first nominee and the year's winner is Nighty Night Bugs, directed by Frizz Freeling. Uh, this is the first nomination and first win for producer John W. Burton, who took over Warner Brothers Animation after Edward Selzer's retirement. Uh, this also marks the 20th nomination and fifth win overall for Warner Brothers and the Merry Melodies slash Looney Tunes series. And as for the characters... This is the first win and third nomination for Bugs Bunny and the first and only nomination and win for Yosemite Sam. Uh, Night and Night Bugs starts with court jester Bugs Bunny being sent off to fetch the singing sword. Upon arriving, Bugs easily walks in and grabs the sword. But once Yosemite, Yosemite Sam and his dragon are alerted of his presence, hijinks ensue as Yosemite tries to get the sword back. Mads, start us off. What did you think of Night and Night Bugs? So, um... This short, I think it's good, but I feel like it's such a random Bugs Bunny short to be the one to win, mm -hmm. you know, best animated short. Definitely. Like, it's, I mean, it's not a bad short. There's, like, funny moments and stuff, but I wouldn't call Nighty Night Bugs, like, such an all-time classic short. Yeah, you know it, what I mean? Or even a classic Bugs Bunny short, to be it's, honest. It, that is the way things tend to be with the Warner Brothers nominees. It's just like, and you told me you were looking through uh, the Warner, the other nominees. It's just like, yeah. when you look at them, it's just like, it's so how many of these shorts weird. do you even know? Like, how many of these have I even stood the test of time? And, uh, and not I, a lot. And I harp on this a lot when it comes to, I like over the past few episodes when we have one Warner Brothers yeah. nominees, I keep thinking it's just like, like, and when you we have the short list for some of the years in this time period, and it's just like oh, you okay. see that uh what's up what's opera doc got shortlisted and uh oh. duck a muck got shortlisted. It, no! And those weren't nominated, but instead we, is my favorite. And then instead we get like three or four Speedy Gonzalez shorts, and Sylvester yeah. is the most nominated Warner Brothers character with I think eight That's nominations. So interesting because I mean not that Sylvester isn't like one I like, but mm -hmm. you know, you would think it'd be more like a Porky Pig or a yeah, Daffy or Bugs Duck Bunny. Or Bugs Bunny. Or, yeah, and Daffy Duck has never even had a nomination. And, oh and my Porky gosh, Pig just has crime. one nomination. I think it's a Swooner Crooner in the forties. Oh, not even Porky in Wacky Land. Wow. Uh, no. <laughs> Which yeah. actually was this category even ex did this category oh, yeah. even exist? Okay. Uh, th this category started in the early 30s. And so like Porky and Wacky oh. Land was like late 30s. <gasps> oh my gosh, that makes me so upset. Also, sorry ahead of time. Uh my cat came in and I don't know if she's gonna behave. She <laughs> loves to misbehave. Um, it, it, I just, we'll we'll work around it. We'll edit around it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so um yeah it's i mean it's a it's a good short i want to i want to be clear like i think it's funny like there's a part where that always made me laugh when i was when i was a kid where uh yosemite sam like chases chases bu bugs into the castle and bugs closes the castle gates and he's like open the gates and then it and then it falls on him and he's like close it close it close it and then it closes it and he's like flat and he closes it again and he's flattened um that gag made me laugh um and i love all the names you know like sirloin of beef like mm -hmm. they make they make that joke quite a few times in the youtube shorts they they i mean they tend to repeat jokes usually yeah. but that yeah and then even with like you know the dragon like it is it's supposed to be like a you know they talk about the dragon like it's like oh it's so scary but it's like a stupid dragon you yeah, know it's just a dog 
yeah it's <laughs> it's like a silly dog that doesn't know like what it's doing um and i mean it's 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 fine but it's not mm-hmm. like you know it's not what's opera doc or you know <laughs> like wabbit season and you know some of the like you can get a good even something like maybe it's not like an all-time classic but you know like baseball bugs like some of the, mm-hmm. the i think golden collection has some of the best bugs bunny cartoons and um not many of them if any besides 90 night bugs were nominated and maybe like uh what's the other one a wild a wild hair i think yeah a wild hair yeah. yeah and and that's a good one i saw that i actually they played that one on film before i saw what's up doc in theaters at the new bev so that was very very fun to watch oh. that i got a i got a taste of what it was like to see a Looney Tunes <laughs> short before a movie <laughs> yeah, I, I, I hear about like screenings like that where it's just where they like try to mimic the experience and have like short films and newsreels and so it's like oh I want to do that so bad I but... know I wish that was still a thing I love Maria Menounos don't get me wrong <laughs> but like I want I want to hear like a breaking news today <laughs> <laughs> and... yeah they should just have like a newbie sponsored short films or something it's just like I, I feel know. like that'd be a good thing to do it's that just, would like, be you... wonderful and it's like it's a free way to get like the Oscar consideration later on yeah, because you know yeah. you're playing in theaters and all that and it's just, yeah. I feel like it'd be fun it's just like yeah like just just keep like the length down to like five minutes or less and like I feel like most people would wouldn't care it's like most right. people arrive after the, sh- the showtime anyway right right yeah exactly and um as far as like other nominees um and other winners i think like i don't know there's some odd ones like i like birds anonymous but that's such an odd short to be like mm-hmm. a win like a winner yeah. um i mean it is pretty funny but like <laughs> yeah it, it's just this is the weird <laughs> like we talked about it last week of course or it's, and it's just like it's good like i i really liked it but it's also like uh it doesn't seem like the kind of thing that's like oh this is the best that warner brothers had to offer this year let's give right it i think the national film registry has the like the four best ones or at least like four ones that are like all-time classics for sure like Porky and Wacky Land, Duck and Muck, One Froggy Evening, and What's Opera Doc. Mm-hmm. Like I think those are four that people are like oh yeah these are these are representative of like some of the best Warner Brothers had to offer um, and I mean I, I like Nighty Night Bugs it's not the best uh, even the best Bugs Bunny Yosemite Sam cartoon but as far as like that I mean, if that was going to be the one to break Bugs Bunny's streak and finally win, I guess all for the best. I mean, it's certainly better than one of the other ones that they, they must not be named the <laughs> other Bugs Bunny short that isn't yeah. a wild hair or night night <laughs> hey, Oh my gosh. So yeah, we have the I feel like Bugs Bunny is like the perfect like example of like to showcase like the Academy's history with Warner Brothers because you have the three nominees. You have yeah. a wild hair, which, you know, first or, or the first time that Bugs Bunny like really was Bugs Bunny. He, and yeah. it is hysterical. It's one of the greatest oh, yeah. Warner Brothers it's shorts. So out funny. There. <laughs> and then you have Hiawatha's Rabbit Hunt, which is, you know, it's like a wild hair if it weren't funny and was instead racist. Yeah. And then, it's- Oh, it's so bad. <laughs> and then we have Nighty Night Bugs, which is fine. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah. It it's is fine. nothing special, but it is yeah. still a Warner Brothers cartoon. It has some good I, gags in there. Uh, yeah. And so, like, and that's just kind of the way things go with Warner Brothers. And meanwhile, it's like if we look over at like Tom and Jerry. Every single one of the nominees for Tom and Jerry is like a classic or like they have so many nominations that they have to nominate the not classics in order to just fill it out. Yeah, yeah. I wonder if um, I constantly I I was wondering when I was looking at the nominations uh, for Merry Melodies and Looney Tunes um, that I wonder if Nighty Night Bugs was kind of like an apology for not giving it to a wild hair or something or like being like, ugh 
there's so many good Bugs Bunny shorts. We just need to award them already. I mean, I, don't, I can't read minds of the Academy voters in 1958, but I have to wonder just because, you know, Bugs Bunny is now such like a staple in Looney Tunes and is um, there's so many classic cartoons that maybe they miss. Maybe they were shortlisted, but were never nominated. And they were just like, oh, fuck, we need to have a Bugs Bunny cartoon win one of these days, I guess. <laughs> I, I, it is I possible that I, that it could mm-hmm. be like a kind of a de- delayed Oscar, like a legacy win or something. Yeah, but also, uh, or consolation. Yeah. I, I also just don't think that they care enough about this category to even think, like, you know what? oh, yeah. <laughs> like we should, like, I feel like something like, like uh tom and jerry getting 13 nominations and seven wins that was just because they kept on being like oh tom and jerry i like them they're my favorite of this lineup boop and then it's just yeah. like they just happened to get that many wins is as it's like <laughs> I, I i i mean think... i do like tom and jerry shorts but i don't i don't think uh i mean i i think looney tunes had a lot more classic mm-hmm. shorts but also, I don't know if that's completely fair just because Tom and Jerry was just one and then, or, you know, it was just the cat and the yeah. mouse. And then, you know, Looney Tunes had like, you know, Tweety, Porky Pig, Daffy Duck, Bugs Bunny, uh, you know, uh, Foghorn Leghorn, you know, all all sorts of characters that, uh, Speedy Gonzalez, you know, all sorts of characters that, you know, even if you don't love, say you don't love Foghorn Leghorn, there's a ton of other character shorts that you could watch. And then even some shorts that didn't have characters that are just, you know, silly one-offs, you know, like mm-hmm. I, I like to think of like, I, I think that it's called like Hollywood's night out or something like oh, that yeah. with all, with all, you know, all the caricatures of, uh, of, I don't know if it was fifties or forties Hollywood, but it's yeah, one of those it, dec- I think it's like, it's, it came out in the early forties, I believe like 41 or 42. Okay. Yeah. So it has like Cary Grant and Claudia Colbert and Judy Garland, like Marx yeah. brothers, all, Clark Gable, like, you know, in, um, and, you know, uh, I don't know that MGM also popped out as much shorts as, uh, Warner brothers did Warner brothers, Warner mm-hmm. brothers and, or even Disney Warner brothers and Disney just, had so many shorts between like the 1920s and 1960s so um, i i think you're underestimating how many tom and jerry shorts there are i mean i (laughs) know there's a ton a lot and just like there is a ton that's true and And then there's also just everything that tex avery was doing with all yeah like a the um, The droopy shorts and and uh, and and scrappy squirrel or whatever yeah screwy squirrel squirrel. yeah. yeah I, yeah. You know, it's funny. I've never watched a spree squirrel. Shirt. Neither have I. I need to change that. <laughs> I, I do too, because I, I, I'm i not doing well. And somebody who loves short form uh, cartoons from the, yeah. you know, pre 1960s. It, <laughs> it's like I've seen a Ham and Hattie short, but I haven't seen Screwy Squirrel. So I think I I've need seen to change like, that. And I've seen like all the censored 11 shorts because oh, they, God. I know, I, I don't know what I one day teenage me was just like i'm gonna find all the sensor 11 shorts and i think i permanently messed up my brain chemistry by watching all those yeah. <laughs> it was curiosity oh, killed the cat at its best uh <laughs> example yeah that's just uh anyway uh but yeah it's just it's going fine. back to uh 99 bugs <laughs> let's get it's, it's let's fine. get back on track here um yeah something i wanted to say is that just like I feel like there was just a lot of missed opportunities that they could have done with this short because it's like Mm -hmm. they have the like Bugs Bunny is this court jester who gets sent off like in 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 the stead of all the knights to go and get the sword the the singing sword that they make a it literally sings yeah it it does it's it's kind of like a theremin or whatever it's or it sounds like one and it's just like I feel like they didn't do much with the actual like theming of it. They just kind of defaulted to just standard kind of Looney Tunes gags, where it's just like you could have played a lot more with like like everything you have with you. It's just like and it's like uh Bugs Bunny is only in his jester costume in the first scene, and that he just co- yeah, they were like it's too to expensive moment. to put him in it the whole time. I guess and it's just like you you can see how like the the budget for a lot of these shorts is is dwindling at this time period because we we are entering like like the dark yeah, days the of theatrical 60s, anima- yeah. animation 
Okay. Right. Yeah. Um, Several studios have been shut. Like MGM has been shut down already. Disney has gone to just has shut down their shorts division. And when they make shorts, it's just by their feature films division. It's like things are falling apart behind the scenes. So it's just like, and you could tell like the budget's going downhill here. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's a lot of samey uh, settings and stuff too mm-hmm. in this one. I mean, I, I do, I do think the the dragon sneezing gag is pretty funny but they also don't do a whole lot with that either mm-hmm. um until like the end where he literally catapults them into the moon <laughs> yeah oh yeah the, the rocket ship up uh, and it's just like i feel like there's a lot of like they try their best to reuse as much animation as possible like I, right, they spend right. a lot of time on uh uh yosemite sam sleeping in the early yeah. parts of the short there's just a lot of shots of him in there or, which, yeah he he just sleep yeah he's a tired boy yeah he just sleeps through bugs bunny walking past and it's not or, until the sword or sings. different ones where he's like flattened yeah yeah it's there's just a couple gags where he gets flattened yeah it's just this isn't really exemplary of like the heights that looney tunes could reach has reached no it's, it's just so, like Apparently, they have a, a statue of this at uh, Bugs White Water Rapids. It oh. is a log plume ride at Six Flags Fiesta, Texas in San Antonio, apparently. Well, it's, let's it's go. Pretty, it's a pretty nice statue. I mean, I guess that's the, it's like Six Flags. They call it one thing, and then they have one thing, and then suddenly it's like a themed attraction. It's not. They're not like Disney or Universal where they have like, immersion they're just like yeah this is a regular carnival ride with like wonder woman slept on it or something that always makes me sad like i don't think warner brothers has a not to go on a tangent but warner brothers doesn't have a great like theme park presence the same way that disney or some universal properties does besides maybe like harry potter that's Mm -hmm. about it yeah which eh. um (laughs) You know, because I think like a Looney Tunes dark ride or like, you know, other Warner Brothers properties like, you know, DC Comics and stuff like that would be such a cool like dark ride and stuff like that. But they just kind of like do regular rides and then slap slap the character on and they're like, yeah, it's a Bugs Bunny ride or it's a Superman ride. But um, yeah, it's, it's just an okay. It's an okay Bugs Bunny Shore. I wouldn't consider it like a must-see or a classic mm-hmm. or as far as like you know a Bugs Bunny or Yosemite Sam um, uh, you, you know yeah. short like Bugs Bunny Rides Again is a better one um, and uh, there's other better Fritz Freeling shorts honestly because mm-hmm. uh, Fritz Freeling I mean he it's funny he used to have an hour uh, they used to have a time block dedicated to him on, on Cartoon Network, um, which uh, based. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, he's he rules. Uh, we like we like Fritz Fritz Freeling. Um, and the uh, Academy I, really loves Fritz Freeling. Like most of yeah, the Wonder Brothers he, nominations are Fritz Freeling shorts. Like yeah, a, only a couple did Chuck tweet, Jones in there. Tweety Pie and Birds Anonymous are his, and then like Sandy Claws and Mexicali Schmoes and stuff. It's just like they they sure love that Fritz Freeling. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think all all of the Looney Tunes wins are actually okay. No, uh, Sentimental Reasons is Chuck Jones. Oh, uh, okay. And okay. Then, but yeah, I think all the other ones are Fritz Freeling. Yeah, like dang, because usually you know people tend to remember like chuck jones and yeah Max it's Avery, like, but i like even like amongst casuals i don't hear fritz feelings name a lot which yeah. is kind of odd because he he's made some pretty great shorts um and some classic looney tune shorts so kind of odd that he's not really in the mix like he did baseball <laughs> bugs which is one of my favorites <laughs> And he did Rhapsody Rabbit, which I like a lot, and Little Red Riding Rabbit, and Bugs and Thugs. Yeah, um, he, he's done a lot. <laughs> in fact, he did Bugs Bunny Rides Again, which I just talked about. Uh, that's a that's a Fritz Freeling, and that's a better Fritz Freeling Yosemite Sam Bugs Bunny short. Uh, yeah. He's done, a, yeah, he's done a lot of good ones. Um, uh, he did, he 
even did a couple uh Sylvester ones that I like, like Back Alley Uproar, where Sylvester's an asshole who just sings really loudly when Elmer <laughs> Fudd wants to sleep. <laughs> I don't know why I think that one is funny, but it it really it really really is. Um, but, but yeah, it's just like. I I feel like I'm repeating myself across all these episodes, but it's just like like if you, any if a, if you ask just like a random like film person just like to name a classic uh, animation director, they would probably name Chuck Jones because he yeah. is, he's like the only name that's gotten like he has all those different video essays analyzing his work or right. like, and he also has not not just the Looney Tunes shorts, but he also did like How the Grinch Stole Christmas and all that. Oh, and it's just which like. I love he is he's a legendary animator probably the most the most well known of, of this whole category yeah, outside of maybe it, uh at this time period at least outside of maybe a Hannah yeah, Barbera the, yeah and I think the only other one besides Chuck Jones and Fritz Freeling is maybe like Bob Clampett as well mm-hmm. who's who has some good shorts but those are the three that you'll mainly hear are amazing when it comes yeah. to the Looney Tunes shorts for its reeling Bob Clampett and Chuck Jones yeah. and, uh, oh, and Chuck com- Avery, obviously <laughs> on a completely uh, different topic uh, I out of curiosity I went I looked at the short list of for this year or and uh-huh. I was just curious like if there was another Warner Brothers nominee this year and there was uh, oh. there was uh, the Mouse That Jack Built which is a Robert McKinson film which apparently is just uh, about the Jack Benny program, it stars Jack Benny and a bunch of people who are on that show, as just like, what the heck? Oh and, wow! And the plot is like four, five, six paragraphs long. Like <laughs> I, I'm not reading all that, but it's just like, oh I, wow, yeah, this is long. Oh my what god! What the heck? It, yeah, it's really long. I, I just, I just thought I pointed that out. It's probably just like explaining every single joke. Oak in the short, it, because it's, yeah, it's Wait, only seven have, minutes long. I have seen this. Just kidding. Uh, this has to be on a golden collection because I have it logged. Because you know, I, I watched. Oh all yeah, volume three, movies. disc two. Y- yeah. Which is okay. On so page. I have, so I have seen this, and it's uh, I mean, Robert McKism's okay. He has some okay. He, he's uh, a very uh workman like director. He he doesn't yeah he, do much. He, I mean, he has some funny Looney Tunes shorts, but and Merry Melodies, obviously, but like. He, I wouldn't say he's like, oh yeah, he he makes all the classics. Like yeah. some of these are are some of these are more the like I like them, but they're more obscure ones like uh, Devil May Hair, um, What's Up yeah. Doc, <laughs> and then um, Easter Eggs and s- some yeah. stuff. Um, Tortoise wins by he, a hair is really good. Which one? Tortoise wins by a hair. Oh my god, do you want to know my unpopular opinion? You don't, I don't like, like that one? I don't like the tortoise and Bugs Bunny ones. I don't know. They've always irritated me when I was a kid. I just hated them. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't I wish I knew why. I I don't know. Sometimes I would just listen to them and I'm like, I hate this. Um I have seen I, the one I do like from him is uh I the girl of my dreams is pretty funny because that's the one where uh Bugs Bunny gets adopted by gorillas and it's like Tarzan but funny and with Bugs Bunny and very <laughs> short and because he because he's like trying to get along with this with this gorilla man and he just or gorilla man he's just a gorilla <laughs> with this giant gorilla who, and he's just he's having all these hijinks with him it's so silly and mm-hmm. then Rabbit's kid is pretty funny because there's like a little rabbit and they um they outsmart a puma like there's some he has some good ones like mm-hmm. but uh i don't know why i don't like the ones with uh the tort the tortoise and bugs bunny i just never have for some reason well i'm going to have to revoke your warner brothers stand card oh no, I, I, no. I, i'm just sorry oh no <laughs> Damn. okay i'm going to give it back though oh yay yeah, <laughs> yeah. i'm very happy about that yay um should we talk about okay what, what should we move on to oh yeah i was I, about to ask you is this like are, is there anything else like you like to say about 90 but night bugs or shall we move on uh we can move on my uh all i will say is please watch more uh classic merry melodies and the new tunes on hbo max 
if you have HBO Max. Oh, yeah, Max. they have so many. It's, it's not everything, it's but so it's a lot. Yeah, it's so many good ones, too. So please watch those. I need more people to get my uh, <laughs> my quotes because not enough people know my quotes, only my parents, which is very <laughs> sad. <laughs> uh, yeah. But anyway, uh, our second nominee is Paul Bunyan, directed by Les Clark. <laughs> Uh, this is the 34th nomination in this category for Walt Disney. Uh, this mm-hmm. short tells the story of American folk hero Paul Bunyan, a very, very large man who becomes a logger, cutting down trees with ease. Uh, he traveled the country with Babe the Big Blue Ox and created many historic landmarks and helped many people along the way. However, with the invention of the steam-powered saw and the steam engine, Paul's talents were challenged, and it's man versus machine. Who will win? Uh I like this one. I like it. Uh, I I have a kind of affinity for like American folklore and stuff. Like I love like the tale of John Henry and stuff. Uh, and and Johnny Appleseed's fun. And Paul Bunyan, he, he's he's a big guy. Like how how can you not love he's a big, a big guy? Dude. You gotta love the big guys. And, and well, I I like him more because he's voiced by Thurl Ravenscroft, who I love um, with all my heart. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Tony the I, Tiger. Ooh. I love Thurl Ravenscroft so that. much. I yeah. love he's he's in like Haunted Mansion. Yes, yeah, about to say he's the third head in of the singing bus in Haunted Mansion. Yeah, the one that's fallen love, over the bit. I love Thurl Ravenscroft more than the world, honestly. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, the answer is a colonialism one. I can't believe I'm saying this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I've actually, this was the first time in a while that I had seen this short for some reason, and I don't remember the context, but I watched this in school, like, over 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. I don't remember Mm -hmm. why, but I remember- Probably just learning about American folk heroes and stuff. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Um, And because I remember uh, he, I, what I remember very clearly is when he's wrestling, he's roughhousing with the ox, and Mm -hmm. they're making- like Sierra Peaks and shit. Yeah. Like <laughs> I used to, for some reason, when I was a kid, I was like, oh, that's how land was actually formed. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is like, a documentary. Yeah. Is Paul Bunyan a kaiju? Seriously? Oh, yeah. He's, he's an American kaiju. <laughs> Him and Babe. I can't believe they like had a socialist society where they pitched in to raise him. Like, damn. <laughs> um, I, I want to see the the Pacific Rim movie where they just fight off. Oh Paul my god, Bunyan. they use Paul Bunyan. He's punching the kaiju. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> or um, Paul Bunyan versus Godzilla or something. Yeah, Paul Bunyan v- versus Godzilla versus Kong. Like, <laughs> versus Actually, the I, Earth I the want this dog. now. Like, Jesus Christ, we we need For- Paul Bunyan versus versus godzilla versus clifford the big red dog versus, like. <laughs> clifford versus the 50 foot woman yes exactly i love i love her i love she's such a girl boss mm-hmm. um i do miss this era of like 1920s to 1960s uh disney shorts um i think there's just like i don't know i i say this all the time i miss that when Disney was just genuine and wanted to make, I mean, they've always had a profit incentive for before all else, but it feels like it's more coming from a genuine place of wanting to tell good stories and be, uh, and be, you know, family friendly, not kid friendly. There's a difference Mm -hmm. um, between making things for a family versus making things for just kids. You know, they, they, this era, I I miss this era because, you know, know, like they aren't so and and Warner Brothers, you know, clowned on them a lot for being so genuine. But I think like, you know, it works like Mm -hmm. there's a reason why people still love a lot of Disney uh, animated shorts and even their features from this from, you know, between 1920s and 1960s, because they are just they they're so simple and but so you know warm and stuff unless that's just you know my nostalgia which yeah. is possible i'm willing to examine that i'm not a disney adult since the disney you, you are disney a disney adult, adult. <laughs> like i um 
I'm just outing you to the podcast with, oh, with, no. with ones of listeners. Can can you can you add a critical Disney adult? Because I'm not somebody who's not willing yeah, to you're, 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 but I, I'm kind of the same way. It's just like I I enjoy a lot of Disney stuff, but I'm I'm also like, you know, very aware that they are very imperfect and very and, bad and at, they, at a yeah. lot of things. Yeah. And Bob Chepik, if I see you in Burbank, it's on site. That is a threat. <laughs> <laughs> um and uh you know it's it it's i like it i don't think it's like their best short obviously and if this had won above nighty night bugs i wouldn't have been like super upset because um it's it's cute it's a little repetitive because you know he goes he goes to a place does some work goes to another place does some work (laughs) rough houses with an ox a bit and then goes and then goes to another place gets gets fucking owned by capitalism <laughs> and, and then fucks off forever. <laughs> yeah, I I really like the the format of it where it is kind of like testimonials from different people who knew Paul Bunyan. Yeah, it's like first it's you have a guy cute. from the guy who like first found him in the big ass crib. Which how, yeah, how did they even the get hell? there? Like how, what the hell? You just washed up on shore or some shit. Yeah. They're like Godzilla. They're like, Godzilla just dropped him and it was just like here yeah. this is it like the he's the he's the child of like the giant from into the woods and he was just <laughs> like, and he fall he tumbles his head ass into earth <laughs> and they yeah. were like uh shit not getting him back I guess <laughs> yeah and, and then you have the guy in the midwest with the great accent just talking about him, yes. him logging whatever and then the the guy who fixed the river for and everything and then oh my gosh that's such a cute visual when he like fixes the the river from being like you know so oh, oh, fucking loopy weird. loopy he is, yeah he just pulls the or he has babe pull yes! the river tight Oh, but also those those beavers work very hard on those dams. How dare you? <laughs> it wasn't the beavers. It was just like because it was so loopy, like the, the cross streams like, just caught. made it all yeah. like clump up. Like, they they were they were getting clogged. Yeah. Um he literally is like old fashioned Drano, just like whoop. <laughs> <laughs> um but um you know I I love I I like I said, I love Thurl Ravenscroft and I love yeah, I love hearing him in anything in The Grinch mm-hmm. and uh in around Disney parks and other, you know, he he does like he's he does a he did a ton for Disney, like uh in theme parks and in movies, because he's background voices in a lot of 50s, 60s, and 70s Disney stuff. Um and I think he was active until his death, actually, too. I'm pretty which, sure. Yeah, he was yeah. Really- very... What a, what a what an awesome dude! I like him. I think he should be like a household name. To be honest, he should he, be. He's so cool. Um, and uh, that ox. There's no way that fucking ox was alive. After, what the fuck? <laughs> that ox was frozen to death, and he was just like, "Here, I'm gonna put you in the fire." <laughs> he is big and blue. He can do whatever he wants. This is true, actually, <laughs> and but. I cracked up at um, the Northern Lights part because it reminded me of Steam Tam. I, I like, thought the oh. same thing. <laughs> Aurora Borealis. <laughs> He's like, well, Paul Bunyan, I hope you're ready for an unforgettable lunch. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the guy with the steam engine said <laughs> before oh he kicked his ass. I hate that guy, by the way. I don't know. Like, is he... Is that... St- is that machine really that much better than Paul Bunyan? It only gave like half an inch more, right? Like, yeah, come it's on. just like, and Paul Bunyan's a big guy. Like, he He's can do a, big a lot. Dude. It's just like the machine needs to be like fed like oil. I guess Paul Bunyan also needs to be fed to kind of make that clear. Yeah, um, but it's <laughs> like the, the way they, the way the society works is apparently this is a socialist utopia where everybody's willing to pitch in for him. Yeah. So, like, is Paul Bunyan secretly about socialism? I don't know. Although the, this uh, short is kind of like secretly like anti-progress propaganda. It's just like things yeah. should be as they were. And all yeah, they were, they were like, oh, technology bad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> New inventions bad. We need a giant man who's able to do everything. <laughs> yeah. it, although I did 
And it's like it, it's funny how this this short kind of still fits into the the classic big guy little guy di- dynamic where it's yeah. still it's pretty much or it ends up being still just like Tom versus Jerry and all and all the uh, right like, you, you right. can't escape it we we talked yeah I talked about it on a previous episode where it's just like every single short is big guy versus little guy or big guy <laughs> is sad oh my gosh that's funny they had a they had a theme with their uh favorite animated shorts i see no it, it, it's not just like the oscar nominees it's every single short film oh. everything is big guy versus little guy or big you know guy what? Is sad. yeah yeah this just is true um and watching both i mean even though nighty night bugs is not like the best that warner brothers animation had to offer but watching paul bunyan and Nighty night bugs back to back i'm just like God damn, Jennifer Lee, get on the 2D animation again. Fuck. <laughs> I miss 2D animation so much. It just feels like, I don't know, not that 3D animation has no care, but it's just a different kind of, you know. Yeah, like, it, it's like thing. it it's it, it has its own like things. It has its own things it's good at. And so it's just like we it's it doesn't help anyone to like completely get rid of like a whole style of animation. I like, know. <sighs> it's it makes me so sad because you know i love you know all these short form cartoons like they they used to i mean you know they pumped a lot of them out and Mm -hmm. not all of them great but like there's some really fun and funny and like one of my favorite i mean i you talked about winner defier's face i think defier's face is really funny (laughs) I um that's one of my favorite Disney ones and very uh very Antifa and not to go on a tangent but I hate when people like clip clip that out of context and be like look (laughs) pro Nazi shorts is just like um you've clearly never watched if you're (laughs) space yeah and uh and you know I love Goddess of Spring and they, they all had different you know styles and stuff and you can tell from different directors I mean they still kind of try to replicate that with like you know like paper man and some other yeah. stuff but i don't know i miss when it was like a norm to kind of at least give a shit about animated shorts yeah <laughs> and it, animation it's we're in such a strange time where it's like animated shorts are kind of making a comeback because it's like there's a lot of like a uh, crowdfunded stuff like hair hair love was right. a big thing and and all that yeah and it's just like like i feel uh, it's i feel like netflix is doing a lot of like shorts and stuff like kind of yeah, like, even, just so they can add oscars to their name but also just because they they just kind of are making them people it's, watch it's, them. yeah it's a it's a streaming is probably like a good way for it to flourish anyway because at least you can you know it's easy for people to see them i mean mm-hmm. unfortunately i i i thought the one the one netflix winners oh um, uh and and if anything happens i love you yeah it's 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 very schmaltzy like, i i i do not like that one we'll, we'll get to yeah, that i don't know you there. will yeah you'll in, talk about in it in two years it's, it's, it's like uh, it's it, uh, it, it it's, it's very yucky yeah but well and it's it's um it's very it's i don't know it to me it's very manipulative it very you know what i mean very so, manipulative it so but God. i hope they make better ones I hope but yeah they... it, the, the point is is that they're making them they, they are produced yeah. or at least distributing them it's and just I like, like that that was the big thing that's they need yeah and i like that i like that disney still tries to put them before pixar shorts and mm-hmm. um and uh disney films like i love piper i think piper is the cutest thing i've ever seen mm-hmm. <laughs> and that's a 3d one yeah um, i I also love like the spark shorts and the short circuit thing that I have on Disney plus now, where it's just like, yeah, like all these different Disney and Pixar animators are getting their own space to like show what they can do and make these really genuinely great like, works of art and stuff like just, yeah. just for the shits and giggles. It's just like, like, and like one of them, I think it's, it's from short circuit. It's called going home. It's like one of my favorite films mm-hmm. ever. Or it's just like, jesus christ it's like there's some great shit on there and it's like yeah. people just need to go out and watch it i keep telling people to watch short circuit <laughs> I, nobody does i will i will get on that because i um i like the well the thing and i don't know if anybody else is bringing that up like um 
I sometimes have a problem with television, not that television is easy to pace, but I feel like television, it's so easy to get attached because you have so much time with, you know, certain characters and storylines. Whereas I feel like there, it's kind of a challenge with film, with feature films and short films. Like you have to make people care in like, you know, yeah. like with a short, it's like between like five to, you know, like an hour and then a, yeah. a feature an hour to like three hours or maybe even four hours. So like, you know, I've always liked that. That's why I've liked, I preferred films as like an art form rather than television, even though, you know, it's not saying I don't like television, but mm -hmm. you know, I feel like it's easier for, for you, for somebody to care when, you know, you have like, when you're dedicated to watching them, you know, for hours and hours and hours from all these episodes and stuff so yeah speaking of not great do you want to talk about sydney's family tree? Hold, hold on hold on hold on i, I, oh, wanted, gosh. I wanted to talk about what you were talking about I, this is a band oh yeah uh, it's like i just wanted to say it's just like yeah the the thing about short films it's like you have only so long in order to like yeah. get people to care about your characters and then give them a story yeah, and so yeah. it's, like, it, it's such a big challenge it it, it, it kind of makes it funny how it's just like like all these like college student film school students it's they're given like one of the hardest challenges in film to yeah, make something seriously. engaging with only 10 minutes of time and oh my gosh like, yeah but so yeah it, difficult but yeah it's really a tough thing and it's just like and then just going back to paul bunyan i i think the short works i think paul bunyan yeah, is cute. a good is a, it's a good story although i i feel like it's not as great as like john henry is like one of my favorite it's probably my favorite uh american folk hero american folk tale oh mm. and it's just like i i forgot that like paul bunyan kind of ends with a, a John Henry kind of thing where it's like it's fighting against the machines and the progress and all that uh, is just like like oh who <laughs> yeah and it's just like in the John Henry story it's like he died like he beats the machine but then he dies right? and it's like it, it's a very <laughs> like, oh. bittersweet kind of thing it's just like he proved that he was better than them but also he he dies he with it. Yeah, he can't live with modern progress. Basically. But then it's like, but then for Paul Bunyan, he loses, and then out of shame, he moves to Alaska. Yeah, he's and just, just like, like I feel why? like that's, that's not as as satisfying. No, and it's also kind of weird because it's just like so he just fucked off forever. Okay, yeah. I guess it's like, we, like hey, we 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 can still use you, you know? Yeah, like, like can't you guys know. go and get along? Even if even if he was just if, if even if it was just like a Lorax thing where he just disappeared, like I think that would have been more mm -hmm. satisfying than him just like fucking off forever. Uh, you uh, know? Also, the Lorax would fucking hate Paul Bunyan. Oh yeah, he's chopping <laughs> off too many trees. But maybe it's a good <laughs> thing he fucked up because otherwise he's, he's deforestation would change right now. <laughs> deforestation would have happened a lot sooner. They they say <laughs> Paul Bunyan moved down to the Amazon. Oh god. <laughs> Um, and you know, there's cute cameos from like people who've done like radio and voice acting and stuff like that, you know, because this is also an era of, you know, people who were voice actors were really only, you know, in voice acting or radio, basically. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it's not like now where, uh, I think the only ones that stay that way are anime voice and like anime dub voice actors and anime um, and animation people. Yeah. So, you know, like for cartoons and stuff yeah. like that. But like as far as like feature film stuff, like it's mostly celebrities. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, it's it's so it's cute to see like, you, you know, like uh, Bob Amsbury, who was, you know, like, um in Sleeping Beauty for a little bit like mm -hmm. uh he's like a goon in Sleeping Beauty and um and, you know like Ken Christie like some of these and you know like we said Thurl Ravenscraft mm -hmm. who, you Ravenscraft. know are, all all our all our voice acting faves from the 50s because that's all they could really do other than radio <laughs> exactly it, it's it's kind of a shame just how much we kind of devalued the, the voice actor and just like like even I know even kind of like more artistic productions that like get get into like I just watched uh, Guillermo del Toro's uh, Pinocchio today, and it's yeah. just like and and while I was watching it, it's just like I 
I thought for a second that like like oh they these are just there's a lot of like normal voice actors in here. It's like they're not just getting a bunch of celebrities. But then I look at the cast list and it's all celebrities. It's, it's you have like, like yeah, it's like mostly celebrities. It's, it's like it has some new people, but also some like see, yeah, a yeah, lot you have of celebrities. Finn Wolfhard as Candlewick, like Tim Blake Ewan Nelson Mc is the yeah, you McGregor as. Uh, the cricket and, and, and then you have Kate Blanchett voicing the monkey and yeah that, like, that is why was that necessary it's like she's and it's like I know like the monkey is talking at, like like talking in regular at regular English at points for whatever reason or somehow but it's just like but it, it, she's also doing the just monkey voices oh, 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 yeah like oh, 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 yeah it's so weird <laughs> but it I guess it works it's just like th these are good actors doing a good job but it's all yeah it's like, but you know I, I wish we could just like you know make voice actors famous too it's just like let, let right. them get the spotlight yeah um, I think so too I agree Oh yeah, that that's a good note to. And speaking of voice actors, we certainly have one in our third and final. Yeah, we do have one, a, which it's, is it's Sydney's a, family a, tree. It's <laughs> a shame it's not a better one. Um. <laughs> we, we'll get there. I, I have a lot to go through here. <laughs> uh, so Sydney's family tree, directed by Art Barch and Gene Deitch. Uh, this is the first and only nomination for producer William M. Weiss, and the fourth and final nomination for Terry Toon Studio, uh, the animation studio founded by Paul Terry, famous for making cheap shorts quickly. Uh, it's been 13 years since we like that. No, that's literally what they're famous for. It's that's like so like Paul Terry was very proud of the fact that he didn't care much about the art form and he was just pumping out oh my trash. Gosh. Uh, trash, yeah. trash. I'm a trash man. That, that's my Paul Terry right. impression. Yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, anyway, it's it's been 13 years since we last saw Terry Tunes in the category. What's happened since? Well, I'll tell you yeah. in the words of animation legend Gene Deitch from his autobiog autobiography, How to Succeed in Animation. Paul Terry in 1955 had suddenly sold his Terry Toon studio and vast library of schlock cartoons to CBS TV. The studio manager, one William Weiss, would have the job of juggling those ancient cartoons into weekly kitty shows on CBS TV, whereas I was given the golden job of turning lo a loser cartoon studio into a winner, complete freedom to reinvent Terry Toon, <laughs> to make a creative renaissance. A sure winner, right? Wrong. I never had a chance. I inherited a studio full of disgruntled, underpaid old veterans who had been led to oh. believe by Terry that when he eventually sold the studio that they would all get a cut. In fact, no oh one got a nickel. Terry, God. Ne Terry negotiated the CBS deal in secret and just took the money and ran. Oh. He was mainly delighted to be a millionaire and how he had outfoxed everyone at the studio. A strange oh old God. dodo, a strange old dodo of mer very moderate appeal. Uh, from there, uh, Terry Toons ended up in a similar boat to Walter Lance Productions, both of whom kept on making theatrical shorts long after the big studios abandoned ship because they made them for cheap and also sold them to television. But by 1972, the studio was then forced to close by CBS, now called Viacom International. And I, I'm sorry for the long rant about Terry Toons of all things. Uh, that no. Gene Deitch book is a gold mine for information and is available for free online. And I'll be referencing oh, it multiple times heck. as the years go on. Oh, uh, wow. Heck yes. <laughs> yeah. It, it's, it is a fascinating resource. I was just reading it a lot for fun. <laughs> and it's like they have a lot of like Gene Deitch was involved with like UPA and, and then Terry Toons mm. and then oh, made wow. some uh, Tom and Jerry shorts. And, and he mm -hmm. had his own career. He, he eventually... Well, he himself doesn't win Oscars, but shorts he directed do. Who and it's just like he, he is a legend of the animation field, and this book is such a fantastic resource. Uh, but yes, back to the topic at hand: Sydney's <laughs> family tree. Uh, Sydney is an elephant who became a somewhat popular Terry Toons character at the time, or as popular as a Terry Toons character could be. In the yeah, that I'm like, like how popular. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and in this short, Sydney the elephant is left without any parents, so he looks around the jungle for other animals to be his new parents. Mads, what did you think of our final short? Uh, yeah, that that about sums it up. Not that good. It it's not very good. It is um, not good at all. I was surprised. Uh, I'm just gonna uh, pun intended. I'm just gonna talk about the elephant in the room um 
Uh, Eustace, the first voice for Eustace from Courage is voicing Sydney, and actually oh. almost everybody in this short. Um, yeah, and I was actually surprised to read that because it sounded a lot like Edwin, like he was doing an Edwin impression, you know, the guy who voiced uh, Mad Hatter and Alice in Wonderland and other, did other Disney stuff. Like, that's what he sounds like to me, or like he's trying to do an impression, but uh yeah it's uh i the whole time i was like damn no one want you for real <laughs> <laughs> and um the the only scene that made me chuckle was when uh he gets scolded at by the father gorilla and it it's like sped up and i'm just like wow this predates a youtube poop i see <laughs> like that's what it reminded me of i'm like this is a youtube poop um and uh i didn't have much else other than like I was just like wow okay um and you know it was funnier it was funny because it reminded me of a short I talked about earlier which was Gruesome Gorilla which is a Bugs Bunny short where he's (laughs) adopted by gorillas and that's better and you should watch that instead because it's funnier and more entertaining because I don't know I don't even think the animation in this is that great and I realized they they were doing cheap stuff, but you got to understand, I still watch like Scooby-Doo, Where Are You episodes and mm-hmm. Hanna-Barbera is cheap as fuck. Oh, um, yeah. They repeat stuff all the time and I don't care, but I don't know. It's just visually it didn't look that great and I didn't find it all that funny. So there wasn't much for me to say or grapple on to to enjoy this because I didn't. I just... I, I feel like the history of Terry Tunes is a lot more interesting than this short. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, I hate this short. I When I first <laughs> watched all the nominees, this ended up at the bottom of my rank. Like, not the very bottom, but like in the bottom five sense. nominees in the history of this category. And it is just intolerable. It's just it, like... Yeah. You have... You, the central character is Sydney. It's just like from from the description, you'd think that just like like oh, it's like this little baby is. It's like he's, he's trying to look for a mom, but no, this is this is very clearly a grown adult who is just yeah, being it's... so annoying and, and just can't fucking grow up and move out. Uh, he just <laughs> need needs some fucking parents to baby it, but then it's just like he, it's pretty much like Ugly Duckling if it were annoying and bad. Yeah, it's just yeah. like he, he goes around just annoyingly irritating these these other animals. It's like, can you be my parents? And they're all like, they all give valid reasons as to why they wouldn't want to be this abomination's parents. It's just like, <laughs> it, and eventually the monkeys get saddled with him, and it and it moves into the second phase where the dad justifiably wants to kill this stupid fucking elephant. And, and it's just like. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just not funny at all. Oh, it's just so fucking grating. I hate this entire thing. Hey, it's, I, it's it is it is it it run it even for a short it runs the runs the joke too long and I'm just like ugh, I don't really care and I don't find this funny. Like I said, it's like it, it you said it's like ugly duckling but very very annoying. It's like gruesome gorilla but not funny at mm. all <laughs> and it's, without bugs bunny and it's just awful oh and i am going to take an opportunity to just give some more info that i found in the book not yeah. about really sydney but just general terry tunes at this time uh yeah. so it's just like like when they were making the shorts they had like pretty much there's three different things that th- they try to do with these shorts so fox uh wanted them to make a uh, shorts and cinema scope just like make them do the white screen and just show off the white screen uh cbs mm-hmm. wanted them to make shorts that would fit in television so it's, even though you're doing the cinema scope you gotta keep things in the center of the screen like so that they can easily just crop it in and and be put it on tv very easily and then gene deitch he want he is a He's an animator. He wants to do interesting things with animation. He's this young kid who's been put in charge of this animation studio and wants to try and do some interesting things. And it's just like, and so you have all these different forces 
like who all kind of want these different things just working against each other and it's hard to make them all fit and oh. and this kind of thing is like what leads to like sydney is just like and, and also they have no budget is also a problem yeah and yeah, so and it's, it's very obvious that they don't have a budget too and so like and, <laughs> And so when things go right, you get shorts like Phlebas, which is, I watched the other day, it's amazing, it's about this just, this little fucking guy named Phlebas, who is the cutest fucking thing, and that he meets this one guy who just hates him for no reason, and it's very, it's very stupid, but in a very fun way, I absolutely love that short, and it does some, like, cool things with, like, a minimalist color palette, it's just, like, it's great. Got to check it out. Ooh. Those of you at home and also yeah. you, man, you got to yes, check out Phlebus. Phlebus. Watch it. Phlebus. Yes. F-L-E-B-U-S. Uh, yeah. But yeah. And and when Terry Toons goes bad, you get things like this, where it's just the most basic idea for a short film, just hastily put together. You just put a guy in a studio to voice everything together. Uh, it The the closest comparison that I have to this film is another nominee called the crunch bird. Uh, mm-hmm. Are you familiar with the crunch bird? Mads? I am not familiar with the crunch bird. It is a very infamous short film, especially in terms of the Oscars because it won oh. uh, the Oscar in 1970. And we'll, we'll get more into this when we get to that year. Yeah. Uh, right. But essentially the short film is one joke. Just one joke. Oh. It's a guy doing a voiceover telling a joke. And, it, and the joke is about a, a wife who goes shopping because women be shopping. She oh, buys women be shopping. bird called the Crunch Bird, yada, yada, yada. Uh, and it's just a dumbass joke. It has ugly animation, ugly voice acting. And wow. Sydney's Family Tree is the closest comparison to that. But the, the only the main difference is, is that Crunch Bird is is the shortest winner in the category's history. And it's only like two or three minutes long. This is more than double that. So yeah. it's, just, it's like watching the crunch bird twice in a row, which oh is gosh. worse than just watching the crunch bird. And so this ends up being just one of the worst shorts in this category history. And it's like, <laughs> I, I usually try to keep some mystery when it, when it comes to our final rankings, but you know, the crunch it's, it's just, or probably Denise not family tree is just so so bad yeah it, it's yeah. gonna easily be both of our bottoms in our rankings <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes um i gotta say as far as uh how do you pronounce his last name deitch Deitch. i think it's deitch or but i don't know for certain i have a history of mispronouncing names <laughs> like and i'm sorry I... john hubley and stephen basusto <laughs> <laughs> i um am not that I am not all super familiar with John, uh, Gene Deitch's uh, stuff. Besides, I've only really seen, obviously, the Sydney's Tom. Family Tree, which, ugh. And then um, I've seen Where the Wild Things Are, um, um, his, oh, yeah, his version. Um, I only watched that because my brother is named Max. And, you know, my, <laughs> my parents were like, oh, my God, his name's Max. Uh, and so, um, but uh, I've seen some of the Tom and Jerry shorts but as he's not worked on a lot of good ones because these are like early 60s yeah late it's 50s it's the Tom kind of Jerry shorts. people kind of infamously don't like his Tom and Jerry shorts well yeah and you know nobody loves this era of Tom and Jerry or even Looney Tunes to be honest because oh, yeah. you know like you said the ba- the budgets start to really be slashed and there's just not as much effort being put into them so um yeah, I wouldn't call his Tom and Jerry shorts classics or anything. Um, apparently, people hate his Hobbit short, which I haven't seen. I've only seen, like, obviously the Peter Jackson movies and the, um, the what's his name? The Ralph Bakshi? Animator. Yeah, oh. Ralph Bakshi. I've seen the Ralph Bakshi version, but I haven't seen his version, which predates the Bakshi version by uh, a decade, right. um, 66. But um no offense uh he doesn't seem like he's uh i mean i'm sure he's a nice he he, he said <laughs> but i'm sure he was a nice guy but hey, he I, only died a couple a couple years ago yeah he was 2020 that wasn't that long ago but yeah. um from stuff i have seen i'm just meh, not not the greatest yeah. 
not the greatest shorts i gotta say i haven't seen monroe which yeah is i was about to say uh, watch monroe that's a great one and, and it's also going to come up in this category soon enough that's oh 19, neat. awesome that's 1961 it, it won uh also oh oh interesting yeah so yeah so, watch monroe I mean, it's great <laughs> i mean like yeah i don't know sydney sydney's family tree is just yeah it's it's not very funny it's kind of ugly to look at and very ugly to look at it's and then it and then i don't know anything that art barched has done he he's not much of a like he he's certainly like a long time like person who's worked in this industry but he in terms of directing he hasn't done much of note yeah, so I say the most interesting thing about this short is that it's the first voice of Eustace in Courage, uh, <laughs> which is kind of wild. Um, he did Eustace until he died, and then he got replaced. But because I guess you, I didn't realize I, I can I did, could not tell because I uh, was a child when I was watching Courage, the Cowardly Dog. I did not know that Eustace went through a couple voice actors, but. Um, you know, I think I, I thought that was the most interesting part was like finding out like, oh, uh, <laughs> he, he got he got voiced by uh, his name is uh, Lin- Lionel Wilson, I believe. Um, yeah, that's the most interesting part. Yeah. Um, he, he voiced Eustace from episodes one to thirty three and then got replaced by uh, Arthur Anderson from there then on forward. Um, but yeah it's uh that was the most interesting thing because for seriously the whole time i was wa- i was watching i was just like is that edwin and i thought it would make sense that it was edwin because edwin you know did a bunch of voice yeah. acting um even during this period before he died in 66 um and really it sounds like he's trying to do like a mad hatter impression and um but you know very annoying <laughs> <laughs> um because it sounds like he's trying to say how you know why why is there even like a writing desk but i can't imagine that you know alice in wonderland the you know the disney movie i feel like it only really became like a classic like in the 70s you know yeah like what like when it started getting released like it was one of the ones that was like being released on home video wasn't it yeah yeah and then well and then you know it had a re-release in 74 which uh which turned around its critical reception so i can't imagine that this it was very influential in 58 unless I don't know. Maybe he really loved Alice Wonderland. Who the hell knows? Maybe, um, maybe he just loved uh, Edwin in a Diary of Anne Frank, and that's why he decided uh, <laughs> to do the imitation. I, you know what? Maybe I. I don't doubt that Edwin was influential. Uh, oh yeah, he was like I, a big uh, radio personality too, and whatever. Yeah, like like, so, like we were saying, r- radio is very influential on animation yeah this unlike time. now radio is not influential now <laughs> radio um, is very much not influential um i mean ed edwin is great love him you won't hear me speak any ill of him but yeah it's it was just a very that's a very odd choice uh to he's probably not imitating him but i just can't couldn't help but think like like it, wow. it might be an annotation. It's just like I, I just quickly glanced at the IMDb trivia and just like it, it says IMDb says it's an imitation, so it must be true. Oh, yeah, because we can always trust IMDb on anything. We can try and IMDb trivia more than anything else. It's always true, always accurate. It's all it's always accurate. Never, never nothing is untrue. Like uh, it, it told me that uh IMDb, tri- IMDb trivia told me that a Mr. Magoo short was banned in Egypt because he wore a fez as during it. <laughs> and it's just like, even though I couldn't find any other source that even mentions that <laughs> fact, it must have been true. It had to have been. Wow, that's really funny. I did not even look at that uh, trivia from, uh, I guess, uh, I hope there's evidence on that, like, 
you know, <laughs> Lionel Wilson actually saying like, yeah, I was a big fan of Edwin or something, but he um, wouldn't have done an interview about this. Yeah, I know, but you know, like in a book, or you know, he said something to somebody. Like I don't know, like I'm just imagining, him. like he goes on like Johnny Carson or something, and it's just like, <laughs> like I, I know you're pro- you're promoting your your new movie or something. Uh, but let's Sydney's talk about Sydney's family tree. Yeah, why did I say Sydney's family house? Um, or, you know, he's on Cartoon Cartoon Fridays as Eustace. Like, yeah, I voice I voice. <laughs> Sydney and loved Edwin or something. I don't know. <laughs> like imagine. Um yeah, it's a bad short. Um it's a bad short. I think we've talked I, too much about this short. I mean, Lionel Wilson, he's cool. Uh underrated figure. Uh yeah. rest in peace. Uh I, used to first I, Eustace. I didn't even know that this guy went on the voice Eustace, or that even Eustace had multiple voice actors. I didn't, yeah, I, I didn't, didn't know, know until I looked it up because I had to look up to see if this was Edwin, and it's you know it's not. It but um, you know, uh, I you know watch Courage the Cowardly Dog, I guess, because mm-hmm. uh, to hear uh, Lionel Wilson in thirty three episodes of Better Stuff, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, you know, and- before he passes away. And right now, I I looked up because uh, I I guess the pilot of Courage the Cowardly Dog who was an Oscar nominee, he uh, oh, the chicken from outer it. space, and I, I try to look up to see if he was in that, but no, he I don't think he no was. he was not. Yeah, it's weird that Eustace uh, goes through so many voice actors because even Wallace Shawn voices him at some point. And he got uh, apparently in the Fog of Courage. Um, is that? Oh, it's a short. Um, it's a short from 2014. Pretty cool. Um, well, I think I think I know why. We, because... We've talked so much about Lionel Wilson, like more more yeah. than I think anybody would have expected. Yeah, I know, Lionel. but he 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 rules. He, yeah, he, I, he, he does. I, lots of these people rule. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We lo- we love we love voice actors here in this house. Yes, we do. <laughs> All uh, right, we've talked about too much about. Uh, and now that we've gone through the three nominees <laughs> let's rank them all madeline start us off with your number three i know it's going to be a surprise it's yeah it's sydney's family tree it sucks yep, <laughs> sorry uh, we said so much about sydney's family tree it's also my number three it also sucks uh now for the tough part what's your number two uh, you know <sighs> gotta pick one I know. I, I Paul Bunyan or Night Night Bugs. You got to pick one. Uh, you know what? Just this is gonna. This might shock you, but I'm gonna put Nighty Night Bugs here Ooh. because, I mean, I think Bugs Bunny definitely deserved an Oscar win, but it wasn't this one. Um, I mean, I, and like it's like we said, it's good. Like it's it's fine, but it's not a classic Bugs Bunny short. It's it has its moments. It's pretty funny. But it's pretty repetitive and um, not the best in its gags and animation. So uh, I have to put it at number two. I, I wrestled with this in my head even as I watched them all back to back. I was like, do I really lo- like put Nighty Night Bugs at second? And I, I think so, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Uh, my number two is also Nighty Night Bugs. Maybe uh, I should have put Paul Bunyan there to challenge you or something, <laughs> but I just I can't I can't do it. <laughs> no, I I force you to go first, so you can't steal my opinions. <laughs> yeah, that's, <laughs> or, this is true. Actually, uh, yeah, but yeah, it, Nighty Night Bugs. It's fine. It's it is Looney Tunes, and Looney Tunes can be good. It can be mid. It can be bad. And this is a mid Looney Tunes short. It's it, it's like mid good. I'd say, like eh. like eh. in the it's it's like a little better than mid, but not quite like oh my god, great, amazing. You know, like it's it has its it, moments. It's the generic idea of what a Looney Tunes short is. It's yeah. Like, if you yeah. fed Looney Tunes into an AI, it would gen- it would create this. Yeah, Nighty Night Bugs. Yeah. And um, so yeah, and uh, obviously Paul Bunyan's number one um, for both of us. And, we agree. Yeah, the reason why I wrestled with it because you know I really l- do like Bugs Bunny shorts, and I think you know he deserves an uh, you know Bugs Bunny uh, deserves an Oscar. 
like at least one of the shorts does but like I don't know Paul Bunyan is like I mean I don't think Paul Bunyan's like oh my god the best Disney short ever like it's clearly not but it's 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 charming and um and both 99 bugs and Paul and Paul Bunyan made me nostalgic because you know I watched Paul Bunyan in school and then you know 99 bugs is on one of the golden collections I don't know which one off the top of my head but um you know like there it's it's it has you know it, it has good really good animation especially for this time period of Disney as they're um it's gonna it's gonna start to phase out you know unfortunately mm-hmm. they're about to go into their dark days um oh yeah yeah and Sleeping Beauty hasn't bombed yet and um which is unfortunate because Sleeping Beauty shouldn't have bombed because it's good. Um, it, it probably did really well. It just Disney put so much money into those features. It's just it's hard for them to even make their money. Yeah, back. it's hard to recoup it. Yeah. Um, yeah, Paul Bunyan, it's it's a cute short. Um whether or not it deserved to win, I don't know, but like it's my favorite out of these three. Yeah, same here. It is it's a good short, it's a good telling of a good tale. Well it it's does nothing it there's nothing to really complain about in there it's, like or yeah maybe, it's not like groundbreaking but it's simple yeah. and effective like you it's, know it's well animated even if it is a, a it does kind of show that it's a bit cheaper than like some of disney's earlier shorts yeah even some yeah even something it, like you know goddess of spring and stuff like that yeah yeah yeah, it's like even some recent Disney nominees like Pigs is Pigs and things like that. It's just like these yeah. are the color, like the, the recent the other Disney shorts that we talked about recently. It's just like those really stand out in terms of color. It's just like, but this one, it's a bit more muted, it, which I yeah. think is all, kind of part of like the whole, like it's kind of, it might be intentional for what they're trying to tell with the story here. Right, also, right. And to be honest, too, if it, if it didn't have thorough Ravenscraft, I might have ranked it below Ninety Night <laughs> Bugs. But I, you, you just I love Thurl that much. I love listening to him sing you, and have a good you time. You are enthralled by him. Oh, I love. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes, I am. I, I think he's. I don't know. I think he's underrated as heck, and he, he's very charming in this short. I mm-hmm. forgot that he voices Paul Bunyan in this. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, it's. I don't think it's like you know the greatest disney short but you know it's it's simple it's effective it's charming like it has it has some catchy music like pretty pretty well animated for the time you know it's it's not a, i think that's why it's just not as cheap as 90 night bugs even though 90 night bugs has some funnier gags and stuff um i think there's more visually interesting stuff going on in paul bunyan especially like what i talked about with the river and aurora borealis <laughs> mm-hmm. and, and uh, yeah i'm kind of surprised that like when disney was making splash mountain in the 80s they didn't make it like a paul bunyan <gasps> ride yeah like you're riding yeah. along like he, he chops down the train you ride the log yeah. down the river to the mine in town or whatever Did they think the paul bunyan short just didn't fit well with the theming of like <laughs> between pro- new orleans and uh and, and uh well i guess not because this is supposed to be what the dakotas it it's but, like but wasn't it bear country back then it's just like you could have put a yeah. bear in there yeah that's true they could have thrown a bear in there like there, there's brown bears all all across yeah. America. yeah this is true um yeah it was bear country at the time because of the country bear jamboree mm-hmm. um you know what yeah why didn't why <laughs> eisner it, had the great idea of splash the mermaid movie with uh tom hanks like <laughs> it's, that's it's such a so, weird it's always so funny to me that that is where splash mountain gets its name it's like it was just yeah, cross seriously. promotion with the fucking tom hanks daryl hannah movie which like that's a fine movie but like that's so random and this one of the most oh god i miss when uh, like I miss when Disney was more chaotic. Honestly, but Bob Iger and Bob Chappick are so boring and safe. Like yeah, I want it, more it's like, stupid all, chaotic all, decisions. All the Disney CEOs are evil, but at least Michael Leisner had fun with it. Yeah, he was he was funny. Like he got you know, goofy with it. Yeah, he was just like, "What if I put a California theme park in California?" And it's like that's <laughs> the worst idea ever, Mike. Let's do it. Yeah, you can. <laughs> 
it can go to California in the theme park and the California theme theme park and the California theme California. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um and or like, you know, let's make all these cheap ass bad Disney sequels. Like that sounds like the worst idea, Mike. Let's do it. Like yeah, it, it, just... you know, he was like chaotic evil. You know what I mean? Yeah. Chaotic bad, I guess. Like yeah, he... Eisner sucks, don't get me wrong, but he was at least like at least like I could have fun in watching him trying to cr- I mean he wasn't trying to crumble the Disney company, but you know. It, it's like it's like the same watching like you know the discovery uh owner like with all the warner brothers discovery merger shit where he's just like i'm gonna make the worst decisions ever <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like man this reminds me of the eisner era man <laughs> but all yeah right. um paul bunyan's a good a good time is paul it bunyan Disney is book? good I, I don't know i don't think so uh, oh, they're missing i feel like disney plus is really missing a lot of opportunities to have like all their shorts and even like all the wonderful world of disney episodes and stuff yeah, like that like do better like, disney god like, i f- i feel like they're like it must be an intentional thing because like they they i feel like they kind of rotate like the shorts that they have and it's like yeah why not just fucking upload a bunch of them like it's not yeah, like just put all of them like you're not going to have people who are going to be anxiously waiting for them to drop the next the next batch of the Disney shorts it's just like just just it's put just them fucking nerds on like there. us who want to binge them you know what i mean yeah, like exactly or who, who want to who love who love shorts you know even like this this is not a bad decision move they have disney adults who will literally watch anything and then they will like disney disney bound paul bunyan somebody do it somebody's <laughs> disney bound paul bunyan and send it to me please all right in fact you know what the next time i go to disneyland i will disney bound paul bunyan and people will be like what is this you just look like a lesbian but it's just like no i'm disney bounding paul bunyan and, and have your, your boyfriend dress in all blue and whatever in the ox yes <laughs> Oh, i love it yeah but yeah uh but yeah disney put more shorts on disney plus and then Please. uh before we end our show uh are there any final thoughts you'd like to share mads or anything you'd like to promote um well i was gonna say follow me on twitter but twitter might be uh just, just do it un- it's not gonna go anywhere. unusable well, I mean, I it, it might not be going anywhere, but anywhere, but it might be unusable. That's what I. That, that's why I carefully chose my words on Twitter. I didn't say it was going down. I just said it, it but, might be. And people unusable. can see the archive if your tweets where. Yeah, I'm at that odd chica on Twitter. You can follow me at Ocarina Persona on Instagram. Um. Oh, my letterbox is that odd chica as well. But don't expect like a ton of great writing. I mostly am just like. Like my most popular review on there is a baby driver review where I laugh at the fact that uh, Kevin Spacey gets hit by a car. So, mm. um, because you know, people thought, oh no, we can't like baby driver anymore with because Kevin Spacey is so like, uh, no, he gets hit by a car and that's pretty nice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, you know, follow me on there. Um, I don't do really do anything else, but you know, I have some funny takes about things. So, yeah, but yeah. Uh, well, thank you, Madeline, for coming on the show. And thank, thank you, listener. Me. Thank you, listener, for tuning in. Uh, this has been the short podcast about short films. Until next time, goodbye.